Welcome to the second segment of Shading with Samir and Susie. Today, I think we're going to touch on energies. Absolutely. Did you know, Samir, that you are made up of energy? It's like, when did you actually find out? <laughs> because this <laughs> was a game changer for me in my world. Mm. Like, we never got taught this at school. So, okay, 101 on energies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, like, indirectly, um, I learned it in school when I was doing physics, when there was this idea that everything in the universe is energy and that energy can't be created nor destroyed, only converted from one form to another. But I mean, when I learned it, I didn't realize, oh, well, I'm energy as well. It took a minute for the penny to drop. Um, but I mean, over time, it started making more sense that everything in the universe is made up of various atoms and molecules. And it's like the movement between uh, that affects the different phases. And then through my personal journey in healing, I came across this notion of like the mind-body connection. And I mean, you know, Susie, that I'm very passionate about energy healing and about massage and the psychology. And I don't think many people actually know why I'm so passionate about it. And it's because when I was in high school, um, I had these chest pains and I went through a whole episode and I went to the doctor and was actually diagnosed with a rare bone disease as well as uh, abnormal heart. Um, got the scans, got everything, and I was supposed to go for operations or something to that effect. And I was just like, no, like I'm too young. I'm not giving up on sport because I was doing a whole range of sports and academics and everything. So I was like, there's no way I'm giving up on my martial arts or my rugby or chess or anything. Um, there must be another way. And that's kind of when I got into energetics, went for my first energy course, did various forms of energy healing, learned about like meditation, learned about energy, learned about like the power of the mind. And I started practicing like a blend of like Qigong and Tai Chi with a bit of yoga. And two years later, um, I was looking at getting some work. And one of the processes included a full, full body exam. And I went for this thinking, I'm probably not gonna get it because of what my scan showed like back then. And went for the full exam. And then I actually took out the scans and I showed the doctor. And the doctor was like, are you sure that this is your <laughs> scan? <laughs> because my heart was in perfect, excellent condition, my body as well. So that's what instilled like this deep sense of belief in the energy healing. And also like with the massage, um, I've learned that our trauma is actually housed in our physical body as well. So yes, it's energetic, it comes up as feelings and emotions, but all these things are housed in our bodies. And it's like through the massage, the energy healing, the talk therapies, the coaching, the various forms of healing we go through, it's about literally working it out through our bodies. And then, I mean, that comes to the idea, I mean, we've spoken about it together before, the notion of an embodied experience of life. We literally 
completely present, completely in your body, shedding your past, releasing the stuff that needs releasing, and embracing all the good stuff. And I think like when it comes to energy, we have this idea that it's positive or negative. And I realized that it's our own thinking that creates the charge. So the way that I view something, my perceptions, my self-structure influences the positive or negative charge on the experience I'm having. And if I charge it a specific way, it's not that now magically everything is negative or everything is positive. It's more that I've tuned myself into that specific frequency. So I'm seeing more of that. And I mean, a silly example, when I was younger, I wanted um, the city eight tacky. And I mean, I had to go to work, I had to save up, but everywhere I looked, I kept seeing the city eight tacky. And it's not that now magically everyone has their tackies. It's just that I programmed myself to start seeing it. I tuned my frequency into that. So I started seeing more of it, which then reinforced the thought, the idea, the... And I mean, that's how attraction works as well. We yeah. program ourselves into the frequency to see like, okay, there's more of this. And that's how we create opportunity. That's how we create our advantages and disadvantages to some extent as well. Yeah, it's holding that steering wheel in yeah. one's own hands. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting journey. Uh, I've, I've based all my coaching on, mm. on the energy journey, which, which I've been through experienced uh seen embodied and and for me it was it was such a, a sort of mind explosion of why is this not being taught in school why are we not being actually told by the way this is who you are you're an energy being and these are the the, the powers that you have within your own your own body, your own story, your own being that you have in your hands. And the 101 with energies with me was I just realized, okay, if, if, if we are energy and, you know, dust to dust, if we had to disintegrate, we, we, we turn into pixels and we are pixels of, of energy. So if you had to literally close your eyes and, 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 think you're all these different pixels of, of buzz, then that means if we unsolidify ourselves, because we I, I always thought I was like the solid piece of meat, but no. And then un, or pixelating myself, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm everything. I'm literally just the air going through me and I'm 70% water anyway. What's water? It's all energy. So I'm, mm. I'm a combination of, of water, of, uh, of all the elements, of air, of, uh, of spirit, of uh, fire. It's all, I'm like, I'm everything. And so... If I am everything, then everything's based on the energy field of love. I mean, mm. then I must be, my default setting is love. My default setting is the good feeling. My default setting. Uh, so what are all these negative things that are stuck on me? What are all these diseases? What are all these mm. thoughts? What are all these things that I have programmed myself to believe I am from my external world and I think the biggest aha for me was was realizing the power of one's thoughts like it's 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 a and it's a school we come to uh, and in the school it's like all the way back to self it's like you you forget who you are so it's peeling back the onion layers getting rid of uh, the diseases, getting rid of the, the beliefs, getting rid of all the programming, just layer after layer, coming back, back to more of me, more of me, 
oh, there you are, Susie. Oh my gosh, that isn't your belief. That was a belief that you grew up in your family with. That was your mother's mother's belief or your dad's dad's mm. belief or your, your brother's brother's or everyone's brought some ingredient to the soup. But I'm still my ingredient of Susie. So the, the unpeeling of the layers has been the classroom. But in this frequency mm. of my, my pip, my core, my spark is the is love and so the more my journey in the last few years has been so down that rabbit hole or to the bottom of the darkest darkest pixel the most like saturated in fear-based and just zapped with love like we've got this and it truly is an inside vibrational job of finding that better feeling like within and from that, it, it, it started growing. I started, and I really had to coach myself like in better thoughts and in affirmations and in, but it wasn't even the words. It was an inside feeling job. What am I feeling? Mm. You know, not what am I seeing? What am I saying? Words are so full of spells that it's like, it's, it's, it was a job that I had to turn inside and go, what is going on? inside what can i feel inside if if my inside feeling is the better feeling my default why am i feeling so crappy and so mm. i had to look at all sorts of things in my life that i was like why am i sitting in the crappy environment why am i you know having these relationships that are not making my default setting expand they're making me put more layers of onions on they make me retreat more they're making me feel unsafe and so when I realize everything is about that frequency of feeling better, which is where I felt at home, which was mm. where my core was. And I was like, oh, well, you know, why were there only a few things in my life that was making me feel happy? It wasn't my job. It wasn't relationships. It wasn't, it was actually just sitting on my own and being with my own and in my own space. Mm. So I literally withdrew from the world in order to detach from all these these lower frequency buzzers. You put a beautiful post on Instagram yesterday all about frequencies and all about energy. Mm -hmm. And it is an absolute proven place to be a happy place. But it's an inside job on one's mm -hmm. own of literally the ingredients of how am I speaking to myself? How do I see myself? How am I treating myself? How am I honoring myself? How am I standing in my truth? How am I voicing, you know, everything to myself, my relationship with self and writing, rewriting the script inside on an emotional, happy feeling, like happier feeling, mm -hmm. blissful mm -hmm. feeling. And then it manifests outside because it's not the outside world that's going to make you feel they were I remember saying oh well when I have money or when my project is successful and all these promises like making my children we're going to go there when we success when we're going to do this and we're going to and when I have that relationship and I was like mm -hmm. where are they never arriving <laughs> they're never yeah. arriving until I had to look at myself until I had to examine in my own classroom the classroom that I should have had as a little girl the, the environment that I that I I, I, I should have grown up in, but I realized it was a classroom. So I wasn't meant to have any of it until <laughs> I was meant to actually find it for myself. And finding that emotional frequency, a better feeling was my coaching and bringing me back to myself every day, mm -hmm. no matter how dark and deep it was, it was like, okay, what can I do to make me just, feel a little bit better 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 until the momentum was created until i had full awareness until i could fully grasp my steering wheel of happy and say oh my god it's a whole love story just with myself mm. and and now from within being fully embodied and fully in my happy place and being the the example of happy and being the example of a higher vibration is what I, what we're here to be, and it's one. Yeah. It's obviously 
one pixel at a time. And now one actually feels it. I, you know, it's it's a I can feel a fear-based something come through me and I look at this and go, this is not mine. It's the mm. my default setting is peace and love and harmony. So therefore, what is this? And then I always go, return mm. to sender, not mine. Shake it off. I literally shake my pixels, shake it off. Return mm. to sender with consciousness and love. Thank you so much for coming into this classroom. I love you. Bye-bye. Mm. And I I I it doesn't stick anymore. It doesn't yeah. stick, but it's a journey, hey? It's a journey of awareness that yes, we are energy. And yes, we are the ones that are in control, not the outside world in control of us. And until you turn the mirror yeah. around, until you turn the whole story around and hold that steering wheel from inside and rewrite the script, it's an instant change of frequency. It's an instant reset. And then a process of just getting, mm -hmm. dissolving the onion layers. So yeah, I mean, how happy every morning it should be. What's my happy gauge? You mm. know, how can I expand? How can I breathe? You know, we go breathing for a reason yeah. to expand that heart, to expand, and it really is that heart space is a complete emergence of uh, masculine, feminine, of your brain and your heart to become your mind, your mind, uh, your heart mind. Everything mm -hmm. is from that pip of, of balance, of positive, negative. It's a balance within your pip, in your, so passionate about this stuff, <laughs> so, but inside, it's a feeling, it's an emotion and it's, yeah, hashtag home, it's your home base, yeah. but it's a journey, hey, right down to and the I bottom, like... right down up again. I think what you were saying is also quite pivotal where, I mean, when a lot of us start on um, the journey, looking at self-help books and um, asking people like, how do I change my mindset and my mind and my habits? One of the first places people go to is do this affirmation, do that affirmation. Um, and I mean, I'm guilty of it myself when I started as well. Like it was more about saying the right words the whole time. Yeah. And I think you come to a stage where you kind of realize it's not about the words that you say necessarily. It's Too many the words. emotionals, the emotions or the feeling that's attached to the words that is what's important. Because sometimes we say certain things in our lives because we want a more beautiful life. We want to experience more fulfillment um, or you want that job or you want this opportunity or you, you want to attract something specific into your life and you say the words, but then there's another little voice saying the reverse potentially. So it's about you utilizing your words and attaching a feeling, a deep feeling state to those words and then speaking it into existence um, so that that little voice doesn't have a chance to chirp and basically giving you this monkey mind where your energy is scattered. You, it's basically like this seed of doubt doesn't get a chance to be planted, but so rather you nurturing a seed that you've chosen plant into your subconscious into your mind into your energetic space and then honing in on that nurturing it slowly allowing that tree to grow so that you can taste the fruits of your labor and i also love the notion of it either being a seed or like this heart cave that we retreat into the space that's within all of us and I love, can't remember which scripture it was, but I know there's a reference to it in quite a few of them, where the, there's this notion that love or the divine, the supreme God, whatever we want to title the supreme being or this energetic form, it's suggested that this being breathed their breath into us, which is the soul. Um, and that as human beings, we 
of spiritual beings having a human experience mm -hmm. and that part of our purpose, so to speak, is to reconnect to that seed, that divine spark, that creative wisdom within us and connecting to it in such a way that we nurture it and allow it to grow until our words, our deeds, and our thoughts become that of the divine. And I think that's the journey that we're all yeah. currently on, finding how to express that divine spark in a way that it resonates with our soul. Mm. And it is a journey. Hey, I mean, if you, yeah. I know in my experience of, of, you know, we've come to earth as a school, Earth is a school, it is a third dimensional energetic, it's the lowest energy in the universe. And it's consciousness having coming to experience itself in its furthest, furthest, lowest, densest form of, mm -hmm. of that love, like outside of itself into the dark. And it's, we, we lose our memory, we, we, we come here, blank slate and as this love pixel to find our way through that dark through that fear through all of the experiences because they're, they're experiences we're in we're actually on a playground and experiences that we've forgotten that we are these we are we are part of source we are part of we are one big consciousness of love and we each represent our own piece of the puzzle, our own pixel. And we come down to earth all as these souls that have forgotten that we're these souls in order to experience ourselves out of and, and our polarity of that absolute furthest. How far can we go down the rabbit hole of, of darkness in order to like, oh my gosh, there is that pixel of light of love that we are and to remember who we are and then come all the way back again to mm -hmm. through the dark through the caves through the through the experiences of outside of ourselves through all the lessons through all the people through all the other souls who are all aspects of ourselves because we're one whole and then we come mm -hmm. back to self and we go gosh here i am i am source i am creator juice i am creator pixels i am here having this human experience in my pixel represented as susie represented as samir and in totality of the knowledge of realizing we are these high frequency light loving energetic mm -hmm. beings and it doesn't happen in one lifetime it happens in I'm put my hand up again. I'm diving down to the lower frequencies and I'm going back to school to find more out, experience mm -hmm. more of myself away from myself in order to bring myself back to myself. And that's what this mm -hmm. huge awakening is now. That's what people are realizing that the outside world's crumbling and just thinking, oh my gosh, I don't even want to be part of that. So, how do I create a new world? Well, you start with inside. And the moment that you I know in my journey, the moment I've acknowledged who I am, uh, this is where worlds are created in that space of knowing who I am at this deep, loving, high vibrational light le level, you know, standing in my truth, standing in my literal power, the powers that be, like this is created juice having a, a human experience, a Susie experience. So now what? Mm. And now being able to hold that steering wheel and say, okay, I am happy because I'm embodiment of happy. I'm embodiment of that love. I'm embodiment of truth, of that light frequency energy mm. that, that is not separate from anything. I am the creator here representing a human in you know as a as a being a human be, human being a human and mm. it's it's a it's a journey that few you know how many people on this universe put their hands up to come and say i'm coming down to earth it's the hardest classroom it's the hardest mm. classroom to face one's true self and all the way back to and 
and to come back into your to the mar- your mastering of emotions and mar- mastering mm-hmm. of these frequencies, mastering of embodying this being of heaven on earth where the mind is now the heart the heart we all does the heart is the mind the heart is the body the heart is the whole energy field and uh and creating from there it's a big place mm-hmm. to land it's a big place but we came you know the thing i just stopped beating myself up when i realized okay this is a classroom this is a school it is a proper soul school where the soul literally comes down. I came down to lose myself, to find myself within that loss, realizing I was always there. And yeah. then to, to drop all the cloaks, to drop all the, the programming, to drop all the conditions that the classroom environment that soup mix had, had left on me and to shake it all off. Uh, mm. but it is not, it, it's not an overnight experience. And the best part of it is now there are more and more people on the journey to realize that you're not alone. And it is a real thing. Like there is, it is a real place. And we are these incredibly powerful created beings of source energy. Uh, and yeah, as I say, new worlds, new universes are created from the spark. And so it's time for the co-creators. It's time for the co-creators to come together to create this new frequency, this new send-off, this new, you know, with, with love as the foundation, because that is who we are in the remembering who we are. It's a freaking awesome journey, but not for sissies. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier it's oh. easier when we find mates like you to realize oh my god i haven't i'm not going insane and that mm. um that i don't have to be institutionalized and put in a straight jacket this stuff is like a real shedding it's a real real thing and now yeah now to manifest magic from within mm. uh in that in that loving uh soup mix deliciousness yeah. that that we are and i was watching a, um a movie with my son recently and they were discussing energy um on in a indirect kind of way and basically what they were saying is that if you are not living from a space of your true self you are actually leaking your energy and you, you're not fully embodying yourself and claiming yourself. So it takes away of your power and you kind of willingly relinquishing your energy to something else. But as soon as you claim yourself and you claim your truth and your essence, the way in which you navigate in this world or the way I like to put it is that we all partake in this cosmic dance like the more powerful your dance the more beautiful the more powerfully present you can be and I think that's part of this journey that we're on it's about finding people who dance to the same tune or make the same music and just going with the flow because we all are where we need to be right now. Mm-hmm. And it's not like we can measure like, okay, you healed more or less, or I've healed more or less, or you further along the journey. Like, it's a journey. We're all walking hand in We're hand. We're all in our own piece of dancing. the puzzle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Because we all... It is. I think we all um, express the divine differently. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And we've just got, we we just got told this, that we yeah. had to be the same. We told, yeah, we got told we had to all be the same or wear the same school shoes, the same, mm-hmm. put in the same box. And no, we are all different. And yet we're all from the same pixel of, of love, yet to express ourselves in our uniqueness, you know? Awesome. 
And so, yeah, you are unique, I am unique, and 8 billion people on the planet are all unique. And so, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just yes. to receive everybody and say, oh my God, Samir, is that how you're experiencing your life and mm. this uh, moment on this planet? Oh God, good job. You know, tell me about <laughs> and get excited for others. Like, really, is that your point of view and interesting? Because there's no right nor wrong. You're mm. a part of me. We're all in this big love blob. And, and you're having your experience. I'm having mine. So it's really exciting to know that we are unfolding. This, this journey is unfolding to more, the, as you say, people coming together on the same frequencies. It's like a beehive. That all the bees are coming in, all doing in their own job. You know, when a bee vibrates, nobody bumps into each other. They're all in their own unique vibrational signature where their one job is to create this frequency of life and to co-create with all the pollen and everything they're doing. And that's what we're here to do is to stay in our own lane, in our own divine energetic signature, all in our big, beautiful hive of life where there is no judgment and there's no pointing fingers and there's no he looks like this and nothing we are having our own unique experiences and if we all just realized we were in the soup mix of unconditional love and not pointed fingers but rather looked at each other and said wow well done for having your experience you know I unconditionally love you because you're just a part of me it's like you're one of you know you could be my it's like you're a pixel of the whole bigger me. Mm. So this whole consciousness thing, <laughs> as the mind expands, you start realizing more and more who you are. I know that me energetically suddenly realizing, oh my God, but it has to be inside where the brain is now getting more information mm. and we and we align to the multidimensional beings we are. We don't just see 3D. We don't just feel 3D. Mm. We feel more expansive in the more the godly beings the the life beings we are from all dimensions so that's another subject yeah another i think time. we can pick up on something to, to that effect maybe in the next segment we can oh. see um but i but, but I, think... I see i see the loving being you are and mm. i feel i feel you because you're me i'm you and it is a feeling. It's all about the feelings and it's time. We are sentry beings. And I'm really excited to more and more of sentry beings of love and light mm -hmm. to, to walk this yeah. planet. I think that changes the conversation. Um, or once, at least it changed my perspective quite radically when I realized that the divine is in me because I, I house a divine spa. And then what changed it again was, am I like developing spiritual arrogance because I'm of the divine? But then the first stage is all, for me was like, the divine is in me, I'm powerful, etc. And then I was kind of very quickly um, humbled by the universe, by the world, realizing, but the sacred it is in everything and it's as you said earlier like we're all powerfully unique just like everybody else <laughs> mm. yeah so we've been dumbed down but we've only been yeah. dumbed down by choice because we chose the school <laughs> so yeah. we've created we've created all of this all all of this so that's another subject as well but yeah mm. we awesome. are we are love and we are frequency and we are feelings and emotions and sensory beings. And we've been stuck in the head for thought. And now it's to come back to the heart and the feeling and realize truly who we are and embody that calmer, quieter, powerful essence, love being. So the world is resetting. It's, a, it's, a, it's people are shifting. So for those of you who are listening, uh, it's okay to feel, it's okay to, to wash off 
the dust and to acknowledge it, to love it, to love it well. And that's how you healed yourself. You loved, you amped your inside pip, your love internally by feeling better, by doing, experiencing life by choice, better feeling. And we are our own med beds. Everything inside us heals with a higher vibration of emotion. So we are healed, our default setting. This ease is merely that the experience of this ease. And uh, it's beautiful. Well done for healing yourself because you are healed. You never were broken. You only came to experience that. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. For creating space. Um, and thank you to listening to this as well. Uh, I always have a lot of fun uh, engaging with Susie. Lots of love, lots of blessings. And remember to dance. Be in love, be in joy. Enjoy the fulfillment that life has to offer. And most importantly, be you. Absolutely. Cheers. Happy being. Happy being. Thanks, Samir. Thank you, Susan.